Oh, that's what Sykes does. I'm not surprised. That was going to come sooner or later. Oh, yeah. Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here, and as you can see at my feet, I am surrounded by kitties again. Today is Monday, August 27th, 2018. We walk over here. Now Miss Molly here is doing really, really good. It's a good girl. It's a good girl. So she's gotten my trust now, so I can pet her pretty much whenever I want to and pick her up whenever I want. So, uh... As soon as she weans the kittens, we are going to work on getting her fixed. Okay, so let's jump right into today's topic of today's video. What if Yellowstone Volcano went off t tomorrow? That would be a shock now, wouldn't it? Now that would be a, a definitely a game changer. Uh, a lot of things would happen with that. You know, it's... Uh, there's been talk about, you know, how devastating it would be to the United States. And pretty much two-thirds of the United States would be pretty much screwed. Uh, there would be just so much ash and, and, and everything like that. And then on top of that, you, you're talking in a 100-mile radius of Yellowstone National Park, where the super volcano is, if, if a major earthquake or you know an earthquake listen to me I'm sorry a major volcanic event happened there within a hundred mile radius everything would be dead pretty much instantly I mean it would be there would be no getting out there'd be no getting away and then after that it would depending on how far out you were is depending on the the you know amount of damage that would be done now I live in New York as a lot of you guys already know uh, we really here, I think it's, we're about 1,200 miles away. So we're looking at maybe getting a little bit of ash in the beginning. That would be it for the beginning. Now, that wouldn't be the most devastating thing. With that going off, it would put so much stuff into the upper, upper atmosphere that you would have, you know, just it, the sun would be blocked out. Within inside of six weeks, uh, your plant life would start to die around the planet which would not be able to support the animals and then after that they died then the plants died then the animals would start to die off and stuff like that so you would be looking at a period of five to seven maybe ten years where you're going to get very little sunshine uh, it's going to be overcast all the time it's basically going to be what's called a volcanic winter it's going to put us into winter pretty much dead on for a few years where, you know, basically unless you are set up to grow underground or if you have greenhouses and those type of things, that would be the only way that you'd be able to really grow anything, realistically. So it would be a really, really difficult time in this country. The fact that initially when the volcano goes, so many people would die initially anyway, that in, especially out in the, you know, Idaho, Colorado, Wyoming, all out in those areas, there would be a, a major, major loss of life, and uh, that wouldn't be wouldn't be a pretty sight at all. You know, uh, it would definitely change the planet because it, it would affect the whole planet. Because if the, if like I said, because it's putting up so much stuff into the upper atmosphere and blocking out the sun, it's going to not just put the United States. The United States would be devastated, but the world would be affected. Because, you know, we grow so much, we have the bread basket there in the Midwest, and we grow so much of the wheat for the world, and uh, that wouldn't be happening, you know. Uh, there would be, the loss of life would be, like I said, it would be absolutely catastroph catastrophic around the world. If you look 10 years after that kind of an event, how many people would be left out of the billions of people on the planet? Uh, it's really, really hard to say. I don't think there would be... I don't think there would be maybe 50 million or probably less than that left after a 10-year period of that kind of an event happening. I mean, it is that dire if, you know, and, and here's the thing is, it's not a matter of if, and I just said if, but it's a matter of when. Eventually, Yellowstone will go, but like I said, if it went tomorrow, I mean, the, what, what I like to try to look at scenarios of, if this event happened tomorrow, how ready am I? If that event happened tomorrow, how ready am I? 
A Yellowstone event is a game changer, folks. It really, truly is. It's, uh, it's going to change everything that we know, how we live, what we do, how things are. I mean, it's just going to change absolutely everything. And not for the better. <laughs> not for the better at all. I mean, you know, and of course, you know, you, you're going to have people that are going to say, well, it's the wrath of God and all this type of stuff. Well, it's Mother Nature. I mean, it's, uh, that's what it is. I mean, this is, these are things that have happened in the past and they'll happen in the future. So it, it's just a matter of time. You know, uh, you look at what's happening right now with Mount Etna in Italy. I mean, it's one of the, it's the largest volcano in Europe. And, uh, you know, it's some, one of the most active ones too. And that just started going off again. You know, so, I mean, and then you look at Hawaii and what's going on there, and that volcano continues to erupt, and, and you know, it has added over a mile of land because of all the magma, or, yeah, the magma going into the ocean, and it has created more than a mile of new land in Hawaii. I mean, if you think about that, that's just, think about going for a mile and have that all be, used to be ocean. I mean, that's pretty wild, and the ocean's pretty deep, so it's not like, you know, we're not talking about, about you know a 20 foot area where it's 20 feet deep we're talking really really deep area that that would be filling up to make that new land so i mean there can be you know there's a lot of damage that gets done with those type of things so i definitely want to hear what you guys have to say i want to hear what you think that if yellowstone went tomorrow uh, how ready are you number one do you think you could survive a yellowstone event uh, depending on what part of the country you're in I mean, the part of the country I'm in, like I said, I'm going to have, oh, it's just actually going by. Uh, I'm going to have more of a window as far as to really try to get something underground in place, survivable. I mean, it's not a whole lot big of a window six weeks before the sun starts or before the plants really start dying. I mean, the weather would be affected pretty quickly, you know. And people say, well, you know, if the Yellowstone event goes, your, your solar panels aren't going to produce any power. They would still produce power. You're still going to get 80% of the rays through the, uh, through the clouds. You're just not going to produce enough power like you used to before. You know, so I, yes, I would still produce power, but it wouldn't be anywhere near like I was before. So, you know, that, that would definitely be affecting that as well. I mean, it just, like I said, that's, it's just something that would, would be a complete game changer. And hopefully you will have yourself in a position with friends and family and planning on working together and those type of things. But, uh, you know, like I said, I definitely want to hear what your guys' feedback is on this topic and what you guys have to say, what you think. I mean, if Yellowstone went tomorrow, I mean, how ready are you, realistically? And, you know, and a lot of people are just not. They're just not ready for that. Somebody's walking. I saw somebody walking. <laughs> One of my neighbors out for a stroll. Uh, but anyway, uh, like I said, I definitely want to hear your guys' feedback on that. Now today, I'm going to kick around here. Pretty overcast all day, very, very humid, hot today. Uh, we ended up being, I think we hit 87 today, something like that. It was, it was really, really warm, but it was muggy. So that definitely affects everything. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? It's just part of what we, uh, you know, it's, we're winding that part of the year down. I think tomorrow they're talking about it's going to be 92 degrees. I think we pulled in like 4.3 kilowatt hours today, even with it being as overcast as it was. Which anything, like I said, if, if I pull in 3 kilowatt hours in a day, I have enough that we can run basically all day long. So anything above that is just a bonus, and uh, so that's a good thing. But, uh, you know, just like I said, one of those kind of days where you just kind of, you lay low, you don't do a whole lot, just because of weather-wise it affects everything. As you can see, my vehicle's back, she's back, uh, she... Spent a few days at my sister's, and now she's back. I want to take you over here real quick. Let's do this real quick. So one of the things that Mom was very focused on, that wanted, she wanted to get done. So I'm going to take you over here, and I'm going to show you this here. So the chicken coop project. Um, I spoke with Greg. We're actually going to continue on with this and get this done in October when things have cooled down. So that's not like, you know, it's not any kind of major priority that has to be done. But one of the things that is been worked on, so here's going to be the roof of the um, for the chicken coop, okay? So what mom has been doing, because she loves to paint, She's been painting them. 
She said she hated it and looking all rusty and bad, so she got an oil-based paint, and she's been painting them. So these ones are all done. These are the only two left that have to be finished. And uh, so she's gonna, she's planning on working on that tomorrow. And uh, so that's what she's planning on doing. But uh, she wants to put a second coat on everything. Now I'll tell you what this is going to do is going to help really go with the longevity for uh, the chicken coop. So that's uh, that's why she you know wanted to get you know work on that. And she said, and plus it'll look nicer. I'm like, Ma, who's going to see it? We're in the middle of the woods. She goes, Well, I'll see it. She goes, I I don't want it to look bad. So I'm like, That's fine. So this is kind of how they all looked here before, and this is part of the stuff that she had done already. But so she's going to get the first coat on all. Of, uh, she already got the coat on first coat on these ones. She's going to finish these up and then we're going to just switch them out and then she's going to work on doing a second coat on everything. So that is the game plan as far as that goes. Uh, like I said, the chicken coop, I plan on really getting that done. It, it, the plan is to get it done before the snow flies. Okay, That's the plan. I plan on getting chickens in the spring. So that's what we're going to be doing. So that's, that's the game plan right now. Uh, I just really... Unfortunately, finances didn't allow other things to be done. Now, people have asked me, too, about the solar. That will be also being addressed, I'm hoping, in October as well. There's a lot going on next month, so um, I'm hoping to get both the solar and the chicken coop finished. I'm going real close to you guys, sorry. Uh, the solar and the chicken coop finished before the snow flies, so that's the game plan as far as that goes. Uh, and if that's, you know, I get those done, I'll actually call it a, a successful year. We'll see how it goes. All right, well, anyway, guys, listen. Remember, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen. And uh, this freaking number, all day long I've been getting calls from this stupid number. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a telemarketer. So anyway, guys, r remember, you know, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every day. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen. And remember STD. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, whatever you're trying to do, the only one that's going to stop you from getting there is yourself, okay? Stay focused and you will get there. <coughs> um, I definitely want to hear what you guys think about the topic of today's video. And look, I'm going to show you here. Look who followed me over here, Miss Soxy. Um, you know, I want to hear what your feedback is. What, what are you going to do? What do you think will happen if Yellowstone erupts tomorrow? Very scary thing to think about, but it could happen. And when it does happen, it's going to take everybody by complete surprise. I, I believe that. I really, truly do. Even with the increased earthquake activity, I don't believe the government will ever really truly tell us what's going on until it's too late. All right, I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Prepper Nurse 1.